All right, let me, let me test my multimedia here. Okay, get my Roy G. Biv looking okay here. You guys cool with the product toss? I don't really, careful, okay. Uh, okay, let me get, okay, here we go. Let me get some Sparky Anderson on that shit. Okay, there we go. Uh, good morning, Detroit, good, good morning. Uh, all right, okay, wait, I have no time, I have no time. My little talk here is called the underdog spirit or that underdog spirit, because my name is Aaron James Draplin. I was born here in Detroit, okay? Um, how we got here quickly. I'm from Michigan, okay? I was born in Detroit on Stout Street just off of Grand River. There it is, that's it, <laughs> I know. My dad worked at Great Lakes Steel, right? We used to go hang out in the, in the parking lot and he'd come down, I can remember this at two years old. Mom and dad moved us north to Central Lake, Michigan, 800 people in 1977. And it was a basic American upbringing with a little sister, you know, and riding bikes and swimming and all the basic stuff. And that was cool until you're about 11, a lot of terry cloth growing up. That was cool until about 11 because at 11 you get to see the politics of that little tiny town where if you're not um, the sports star, you're nothing. I tried my hand at basketball. In 87, mom and dad got us to Traverse City, Michigan. And that's where I became a skateboarder and a snowboarder, and I discovered art and punk rock and all the things that matter in life, right? And as soon as I could, after 17 and 19, a little community college, I go all the way to Oregon to be a snowboarder, to live like an animal with all my buddies all over the West, when it matters. Drawing, you know, and painting, um, doing snowboard graphics for no money, of course. I didn't have a computer, I go all the way to Alaska. I wash dishes for a whole summer of 130 hours a week in God's country or whatever you wanna call it to make money for my first computer because I never really knew my mom didn't have a lot. We had Legos and pizza and uh, 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 you know, uh, love and shit right at the house. <laughs> but here I am sleeping in between shifts and you can see someone put a mosquito on my lip. Cool, right? Four summers of this. So I go back to art school in Minnesota. They pick me, I get to go to art school. I got to go to art school. I was lucky to go to art school. I made logos there and I learned how to use the grid, you know, because I was ready to get it. I didn't want to go change the role with design. I wanted to make a living. I got my first job at a snowboard magazine all the way in Southern California. Big mistake. I went all the way down there, land of the beautiful people. Get down there, 22 months, two cycles of the magazine, and I get back to Oregon, and let's see, I guess it was 2002 have my first studio job. First studio job is incredible because now I get to make watches and cool advertising and logos and things and icons. But I also saw meetings about meetings, emails about emails, right? So I could make more money freelance than I ever could, let's just say, uh, pretending to like my job. So I jumped out on my own. I bought a little house. I got an attack dog named Gary, okay, all right. Let's keep it professional, people. Okay, and now my basement, where I could start to invent my life, now I had my basement. So, you know, or where I got free. So here's proof, okay? I've been busy for 12 or 13 years, free of all the you know, bureaucracy of like a big agency or small agency, making logos, making uh, field notes, these little things I just whipped, hopefully no one got hurt. Um, these are things I, I'm, a, I'm an owner of this thing. We have 2,000 stores all over the nation. I was just told by you know, headquarters in Chicago. Now I make a bunch of merch. I'm up to 180 items now. And this is myself and then my, you know, my better half, Lee. And we do the whole organization out in Portland where I live in Portland, Oregon. I make posters for places I love and I get to travel. Um, and I have been able to go everywhere. I just went to Guatemala and she, I went to Dubuque last year almost twice. So I have gone everywhere <laughs> to go talk about myself, which is very weird. This. All packed into this. I got to make a book, right? I know we're not supposed to pitch things, but that's not supposed to happen. I've been fighting hard to make it, right, this whole time. And yet, where's that fight come from, right? I'm not from Detroit. I was born here but I know about this, the MC5, okay? The Stooges, all right, okay? Bob Seger, okay, you know, you know, the early period, but <laughs> the Spinners, come on, come on. And when I was, of course, old enough to start coming down here in 1991, 
the laughing hyenas and mule and the dirt bombs, which I still love the dirt bombs. This basement kind of culture, this is what made it okay for me. Because I grew up around this stuff. And proudly, oh, while I'm here in front of everybody, proudly, nothing to do with this turd. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Oh, oh, striking a nerve, huh? Check how he's voting. Okay, moving along. <laughs> I, I have fond Detroit memories, okay? St. Andrew's Hall, my first punk show. My grandma's house shit, on Joy Road, right? Melfar Superstar. I was in Tiger Town. Look at, look at, they thought I looked like him. Those are my hands in Tiger Town. Yeah. Okay, my dad, we climbed under a fence when I was 11 years old to go see Olympia before it was torn down because we went into the Red Wings locker room there and took the carpet because my dad wanted to get the carpet where Gordy Howe's balls dripped, okay? <laughs> my favorite story from the book. This is from the book. 1983, there's my dad. Now, I don't have a shot, I don't have a shot of my dad, Jim Draplin. I don't have a shot of him from 1983 Polish American night where the beer was flowing, he was a little tipsy with my uncles and all my cousins and stuff. I don't have a shot, I'll call this mid-sip, okay? So, my dad, we get there, my dad says to me, I'm gonna get you a ball, punk. Now, you never tell a kid you're gonna get him a ball, okay? Third baseman, chain of lake, you know, okay, everything's cool, but, you never tell your kid you're gonna get that. This is 1983, Tiger Stadium. Ninth inning. Ron Hassey, Cleveland Indians, tips one off the Tigers dugout, back to us. My dad dives two rows, <laughs> catches the ball, doesn't spill the beer, <laughs> stands up, puts the ball in my lap. My dad. So, I've been rolling up my sleeves for underdogs my whole life, because I didn't know any better. Bigger isn't better, and free, my mouse finger can change lives. I know this, because I've already done it with crusty little things. But when these guys call, now this was an underdog. Who went and saw the inauguration? Okay, I was there representing Detroit on some molecular level, I was there. <laughs> but you see this that night, you know, and you're scared, because, because you know, the other guys are moving out. Barack and Michelle are moving in, and I was, I voted for them, I was proud. I love this logo. So who gets to move in, who gets to make the logo? We were, Lee and I were there, we were scared, you know, just this whole process. And then I get this call from the people about six weeks after inauguration saying, have you heard of the stimulus package? Sure, 800 billion bucks? Well, Aaron, we have five days to make this logo. What are you doing this weekend? This is on a Wednesday. Okay, no. <laughs> to the youngsters, sorry, okay. But whoever was calling me from Chicago who made his logo, they worked for him. So I was so scared. When you see these logos, myself, my buddy Chris Glass from Dayton, Ohio, and the Mode Project, we got to make these not for Barry, for America, okay, for America. In my hometown of Central Lake, Michigan, where they say the most horrific stuff about an incredible president. My logo's on the sign there where they're putting in a new road a couple years back. Monday morning, our president was showing our logos to America, right? And I cried my eyes out seeing this. And then, okay, I got to work for America. And then, oh, at SeaTac, a couple months ago, we know some people and we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. America lands the plane. There comes America taxing in and <laughs> From here, from this distance, from me to him, that's when I started to cry. Because he represents dignity, and he represents the idea that the underdogs can get insured, okay? That underdog, okay? Okay, I know. I know how you vote here, thank you. But when he got to me, I'm crying my eyes out, thanking, and I, this is what I said, I said, I'm gonna miss you, man. Now look it. Usually when you meet the president, you get one handshake. I got the handshake, I got the hand clasp, and because I was crying, he hit me in the shoulder. Okay, recent stuff. I worked for Bernie six months ago. Huh. Huh. I know, it hurts, but Big H is gonna kick ass come November. Oh, man. Okay. 
But I did three posters for Bernie. And I got to go to an art show with Lee all the way to New York City. My buddy Lewis is his like outreach guy, back before you know, they had to kind of call it. But there's Lewis looking at me saying, don't do anything stupid, Drap, and see? <laughs> but see, I was so high in this moment. There's Bernie. I've liked Bernie since about 91, 92, because there's only one Bernie, okay? And I had no proof I was there until I was digging around on Getty Images, and I found this. <laughs> New posters, <laughs> a skillet company. My dad died, and I got him tattooed on my arm, and it's my fucking arm. I'll let him, if he said, you better get it right. I got in a little bit of a scrap with the guy in the, on the table, and I found a bloody toothpick, and anyway, okay. Logo for the Sun, Vans documentary. Uh, I made the first LGBT, one of the first LGBTA cards for Target, proud of that. Um, Pop-up stores, two years in a row now in Portland. Uh, we made a new Mini Mart in Portland. Uh, my friends and I, they put me on a magazine cover. That's amazing. Uh, I got to go to, s graphic design took me to Guatemala and Sydney, Brisbane in, in Melbourne, okay? I was on Mark Marin's show, Give It a Listen, okay? Something for nine for, okay. I made a typeface this year. That's coming out in a couple months. Things I love, all the way at the top. I love my family, all right? I love my family. Look at the neck angle on the nephew, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Lee is here, okay? We're, you know, we traveled here last night. Uh, my, my little nephew, Oliver, who's the light of our lives, who's six. Who's six, and he's starting to, his teeth are going to fall out soon. That's incredible. My shop. I love Portland, Oregon. And man, I love Detroit. I've been coming back home three times a year. But listen, what, the only reason, when Charlie called me, I was afraid to come here because I didn't want to be the kind of person who buys a sweatshirt and says, Detroit, I know. But just so you guys know, all the places I've been, all the places I've been lucky to live, just know, I always defended my hometown, okay? I've always defended it because this continues to teach me, you never fuck with an underdog, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thanks. <laughs>